Sabbath, the great Sabbath here is not for anyone but is for the Lord. Out of his own wisdom, he designated the 17th of August that I am going to have all men at this given place. That men should be here, should talk things with which regard them. So that when they go back to their respective places, they are going with that which the Lord has empowered them with to go and implement in their homes and in their churches. To give us strength as men. To give us courage. As embedded in our theme. That be strong. Be courageous. In the Lord. That every man that is here. Must be strong. Must be courageous. In the Lord. When leading that given home. When leading your family. You are to be strong. Be courageous. Not in yourself. But in the Lord. Then things are going to work out. In that I'm very happy this morning my predecessors who spoke here Tawa, they finished everything. They empowered us Tawa, with substantial information that can help us <laughs> be upgraded <laughs> from where we were <laughs> to where the Lord wants us <laughs> to be. <laughs> and if we can be there, <laughs> the Lord every second and minute in heaven <laughs> will be nodding the head that my child <laughs> is doing the right thing. <laughs> my child is running the family in the right direction. Yes, it's imperative that men must come together time and again so that they can link broad shoulders and see that which have been given to us ever since the world began. We are reading in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1. Verse 1 says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of the altar. There is one section that I skipped. Let me just come back to it. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of diamond. It is graven upon the table of their hearts and upon the altars, the horns of your altars. Maslozi, Jeremiah Kahonia 17, Valamoa Nili, Sivi Sajuda, Singozi, Kapen, Yasipi, Nikango, Ya Shingile, Ya Daimani. Singo zwi fali pata zali pilo zavona ni fama manaka a le aterere zavona. That's our message for today. Kona volumi wa walu nakachenu. The sin of Judah. Sivi sa Judah. 
is written with a uh, iron pen. Singozwe kasepe with a point, the ball point there of Kango. diamond. Kango ya diamond. Diamond is very strong. Diamond ki to etile. Very powerful. Yeti lahulo. That if you want to cut a glass, have the, the tip of that pen that cuts blood uh, uh, glasses, there is diamond there. Just a scratch. <laughs> is enough to cut it. This is how strong it is. And the Lord is saying to Judah, 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 you are full of sin. You are full of sin. And your sin has come up to me here. In heaven. And I am unhappy about this sin which is in Judah. And therefore, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, go and tell them. Go and tell the nation of Judah that I have written your sins with a pen of iron. God is unhappy. And because of the nature of sin, God feels this sin can only be properly written with a pain of iron. If it was about using this pen, the Lord feels the pain is not sufficient to write the sins of Judah. This is not enough. The gravity of sin, it does not equate to this pen. So the Lord feels there is a need to write with an iron pen, pen which is having a point of diamond, yeah, ingo, yeah, diamond so that the Lord gra engraves on your heart <laughs> about your sins. Si now when the Lord has written there, yeah, there fateni, what is engraved there the, that sin fateni, is cannot be deleted. <laughs> Because the pain is that of iron. And the point, therefore, is diamond. Writing on your heart. When those hearts are pumping blood, the blood that is going to the entire body is blood which is having seen of Judah engraved. And not only that, also on the altars in Judah, Man in Judah, those altars which were created, which were made under long trees, green trees. Also the altars which were put in hills and in mountains. And these altars were of gods, not God. Israel or Judah had decided to go away from the Lord. That instead of bringing uh, offerings on the proper designed altar of the Lord. Men made efforts in Judah. Men, not, not women, men were designing altars. These altars were meant to go and make sacrifices to the gods, not to God. The men in Judah, 
were convicted that it is important for them to start worshiping gods and not God. And therefore, they were supposed to make altars. They made a number of altars under green trees on high places that they go and sacrifice their kids sacrifice the devil the gods which were there by then. And because men took such a stand, their wives, their children, were also initiated in this type of uh, prayer, praying the Their kids, their wives, were convicted, were convinced by their husbands that we are to shun the Lord and go and make our own altar. Their hearts, their hearts had gone against the Lord and they were now into doing sin. And therefore, the men in Judah had led their family to move away from the Lord and dedicate their hearts to evil uh, worship. And the Lord was not happy because his representatives, the men, they were building altars which are not to the Lord but to God. Men of Judah. Men of Judah. Spearheading their own families. To worship. Spirits. To worship. Gods. And the Lord. Was unhappy. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, go to Judah. Kwa Judah. Tell them Ubaburelele. what I am about to do. Senikaeza. That I am going to write their sin on their hearts and on their altars using a metal or an iron plate which is having a point of diamond that will engrave that no one can erase that these are the sins of Judah. It's Judah. Judah. Judah was led by kings. But each and every home was led by that given man who decided to abandon the Lord. And today, this morning, we have men who are here. Each and every man that is here. God has entrusted you a family. Your wife is there. Your children are there. The Lord is waiting to see what is it that is happening in Zambezi, in Divundu, all of us that are here. The power that the Lord had given us that we are supposed to run our homes. Are we doing it in alignment with the Lord? Or we are misleading our families just as was happening here that instead of worshipping the Lord God 
Almighty. In a proper way. We are the ones who are misleading our family. That our wives, our children, they disregard the Lord. Because we are not firm enough as our members. We are not firm. We are not firm in the Lord. Mm -hmm. This morning, there was an example of Noah. We heard about that. Noah was an Amo member. No, no, no. When he just heard the instruction of building the ark once. He rolled out the entire project to the mother, to the wife, and to the kids. We have a divine project. This can't fail. It must never fail. Because the Lord says, I must build an ark. Therefore, my wife. Therefore, my three kids. And your wives. We must be fair. Irrespective of what they were saying, when they were mocking them, the armor man was firm in the message that came from the Lord. He never deviated from it. And every time the wife wanted to doubt, Noah was firm. This is not a joke. My children, this is not a joke. There is a flood coming. But there was never a rain before. There was never a flood before. And therefore it was possible to regard Noah, the armor man, to be psychotic. But Noah stood firm. He stood firm on the message of the Lord. Doing that which was assigned to him by the Lord. And his family was also backing him up in the 120 uh, years of building and also preaching. It was not easy. It was not easy. The Lord today is calling upon all of us as our members that when he gives instructions, when he gives us something to do, let us image like Noah and do it all the way up to conclusion. And this is how Noah entered the if he was not careful, he was going to finish building the ark. And after completion, he was going to relax and say, Well, I built the ark. There it is. I'm not going in. My wife is not going in. My children are not going in. Who was going to be saved? Who? There was a need for him. The armor member Noah. That after completion, he must walk in. The earth. He must move into the earth to prove a point to those who were busy and suppressing him. That I meant. What the Lord said told me to do. And here I am. I walk majestically into the ark with my wife, with our children. We are getting into the ark. It's not that maybe it's a hook, no. This is reality. And therefore, I am going into the ark. Which ark are you leading your children? Your wife? Which one is it? I 
anything. Is it the ark of the Lord? Or is it the ark of the devil? Where are you leading your family? Are you leading them to salvation, to glory in heaven? Or you are the leader of the family into hell? It's in times like this, my brothers, my sisters, where we need to, to be firm in the Lord. You remember what happened in Egypt? When Moses said, tell the Israelites, tonight we are living. Each, each family must kill a sheep. Eat it and finish it. Instructions were given on how they were supposed to eat. Do not eat while seated. Eat while you are standing. It's the Passover of the Lord. And therefore, for the home to be safe, each and every armor is a light that was in Egypt. <laughs> they had to make sure the instruction that was given to Moses was must be followed that night. That's the only way salvation was going to be in every home. Each and every man took the instruction seriously. And he kept telling the wife, the children, it is the Lord's Passover. We have to make sure we are doing the right thing. Otherwise, there is going to be catastrophe in Every armament Mona Mona. who was in Egypt had to carry out this instruction consistently as yes, outlined. And salvation was in each and every Israelite. Yes, when the angel of death came in Egypt. It was found that in each and every home of an Israelite, there is no death that is The Lord is also giving us instruction. Do that which is needed of you. How is your home? <coughs> is your home a restring ring? Starting with you, the Amo member. Maybe you are the one who is John Cena. In that ring. And unfortunately, you are not fighting with any other man. You are fighting with your wife. You are fighting with you, your children. Other homes are a living furnace. All because of us who are children. We are not caring. We don't love our wives. We don't even love our children. Some of us here, your wives have seen your smile from the time when you were dating. From then onwards, when you just enter the room, you were busy laughing with other people. There. But now, when you come and enter your home, now you are moving majestically, frowning, just entering the house. The wife is also saying, The kids are running all over because the macho man has. Come. Somebody who's supposed to make everyone comfortable. He is the one that is terrorizing. That they are scared. 
Instead of them being married, that our Ammo man has arrived, that your wife can go and receive you on the door. But when they come, six packs of wrinkles. Speaking in that voice. Where's food? <laughs> in our home. Just like Job was doing. Every day there is a sacrifice. Sacrifice even for the kids. The Lord made a hedge of fire. Around, around Job. That when Satan is coming, he sees this hedge. And this is why he was complaining in heaven. You are asking me about your servant Job. Is it not you, God, who has put a, a hedge of fire? Remove that one. Then you will see what will Happen. So, my beloved friends, if we commit ourselves to the Lord, the Lord is going to be with us. The Lord will put a hedge of fire surrounding our family. And on Sabbath, when we go to church, each and every home is moving with God's glory into the house of worship. This one, Brother Stunda, also a hedge of fire. Brother Sinepe, with a hedge of fire in the family. Brother, eh, Chata, Chata, with the glory of the Lord Mika surrounding the family. Can you tell me Manipurale. how much megawatts of Onamata power akavateni. are getting into that one change? Akakena kena kena how many? Yo. How much? Mataka kumakai. All those hedges oh, of fire yo. which are coming from every home yeah. because of you are going together with you to church. And when we arrive in church, we have a very, very big, huge fire of the Lord in church. And when we worship him in spirit and in truth, he will answer our prayer. Why? Because heads of family are firm in the Lord. They are connected to Jesus. Vertically and connected to the wife and to and people will see how powerful our God is. He has promised in the last days I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit so that man should see dreams. The Lord is waiting. The Lord is ready. The Spirit is there. Are the men able to see them? Are you able to see vision? Why are we not seeing it? It's because us, the heads We are divided. We are peddling two canoes. The Lord doesn't want that. The Lord wants us to have a hedge of fire from the Lord surrounding our home, surrounding our family. Our members, let us put Katima on fire. Let's put Katima on fire through the hedges of the Lord. When the angels come down, they already see see the fire burning in your home. They already know that that is God's place. That is God's place. That is, look at the fire. Look at that fire there. That is God's place. And when the demons 
I released you from devil, the how, devil. How far do you want to see? That go. Kuri amuye. Enter katima. Amu kera ba katima muriro. With your mighty. Nika mata mina kafara. They know when they come to your home. Ala tiba kuri hake na mala paramina. That demon cannot enter. Ona tima na yo haikeni. Because of what? Vakeni sangi. The hate. Vakeni samu la kawa muriro muri mu. Brought by who? Uti suza kemangi. Every hate. Ona tao ya sibaka. It's time, my brother. Let us change from here. Let us change. The Lord is more than willing to change us. Maybe let's read from the Bible. The book of um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 26 and 27. Ezekiel 36. What we are going to read here is what the Lord wants to do to each and every one of us. I would regard this one as a committal, a commitment of each and every AMO member that is here. Verse 26 says, A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Mm. <coughs> Tumezi, mwa 26, ya Ezekiele, kanyo ya 36, ili sinachwana, nini ka mifapilu yencha, ni kenye kuminamo ya omuncha, nini ka zwesa, mwami, hivili wani mwapilu, yari chwe, nini fepilu, yanama, 27, Nikabe ya moya waka kumina mini keni seku nikoni seku za maya kamila oyaka mimuka mamerari taelo zaka kuli zieze 29 Before we came here <laughs> It's most likely that maybe our hearts were graven with a metal pen because of sin. <laughs> but this moment, <laughs> the Lord is ready <laughs> that He must change our hearts. <laughs> he says, <laughs> a new heart. <laughs> the Lord is ready to remove that heart which was engraved by iron. That he must put a new heart in each and every one of the armor members. There. A new heart. A new heart. Also, giving us his spirit that the Spirit must lead us always. My brother, my sister. It's possible. It's possible. That the Lord can change our hearts. Maybe there's someone who says, let's make a commitment. The Lord is ready. To give a new heart. 
Remove a heart of stone. So that we can move in his statutes. <coughs> the commandments which were given by God. They are supposed to be properly guarded by each and every armor member. It's us who are supposed to be firm on the commandments. When we see this getting out of hand. We must be like Noah. We must be like Job. Stand firm on the principle of the Lord. So that salvation in that home must be perpetrated by you. Yourself, wife, children, all of us need to be saved. But the pastor in the home is you. It is you. If there are no prayers in your home, the problem is not the Lord. The problem is you. If there is no prayer in your home, if there is no hedge of fire in your home, the problem is not God. The problem is you. Go and do something. As we are going to move from here. Change. Change, my brother. Go and invite the hedge of fire. Go and talk to your wife. Your children. We are behind. Other people are way ahead of us. It's never too late. Let us get started so that a hedge of fire should surround each and every one so that when we go to worship, we are going there with KVs, high voltage of the Lord going to the house of God. The Lord doesn't want to write on your, on your heart with the metal pen. The Lord says, I want to give you a new heart. Anyone who wants a new heart, just put up your hand. I want to read this commitment again while our hands are up so that we get assurance on what the Lord is saying. The Lord says, a new heart also will I put in you. A new heart will I give you. And a new spirit will I put into you. I will take away the stony heart. And while our hands are up, we are asking the Lord, Jehovah, to take away our stony heart. Give us a new heart. Give us, Lord, the Holy Spirit power that we can walk in your commandments. That we should talk about your, 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 your commandments from today onwards. Bring a hedge of fire on each and every one, Lord, whose hand is out. That we are protected by you, Lord, from now onwards up until the coming of the Messiah. May the Lord bless you, Jehovah. Let us stand in prayer. We are finishing with an enchantment. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, which is our theme. Joshua 1 verse 9. You will repeat after me. <coughs> Be strong. Be courageous. In the Lord. Be strong. Be courageous. In the Lord. Third time. Be strong. Be courageous. In the Lord. 
May the Lord help us that we be strong, that we are courageous from here to go and roll out that we are learned. God bless us all. Amen.